Today is Friday, September the 18th, and I am your host, KC Phoenix, and this is my daily thought. Okay, it's weird what's been going on today. It's been like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and stuff. Housekeeping, KIRWKC.com is the main podcasting platform for Keeping It Real with KC. As some may already know, My Daily Thought is a supplement to the Keeping It Real with KC show, which is a weekend show, which I will be doing episodes this weekend. Um, I, before I go into what I plan on talking about for My Daily Thought, honestly, I feel like Oprah Winfrey right now. I feel like Oprah. You know how when Oprah used to mention something on her show, it would disappear in all the stores? That's how I feel right now. I mentioned pumpkin puree, and I think I've mentioned it too much because all the canned pumpkin puree is missing in the stores. I kid you not. I did, okay. So first I went online to my usual, which is Amazon Fresh, Whole Foods, whatever, which for those who know, um, may not know, Amazon Fresh and Whole Foods, the food usually comes from the same source, but there are rare occasions where if you go through the Whole Foods route on the Amazon website, they may have something directly within the store that Amazon Fresh may not have in stock, even though it usually mostly comes from the same source. So I checked both of those online none of them had pumpkin puree or any type of canned pumpkin i was like oh okay fine whatever so then i go into instacart and just so you know i can't stand instacart i'm not an instacart fan both times i've used them it's been an unpleasant experience and that's just how i feel that's my opinion if you like instacart more power to you but for me my experience was not pleasant both times so whatever all right, so this third time, I decided to just go ahead, charge it to the game, or to the Amex, <laughs> and place the order for the canned pumpkin. All right, so I ordered nine cans. Usually I get like three cans, but I ordered nine. That way, I wouldn't have to worry about it for a while, because usually... A can will last me for about three days, which if you use open your canned pumpkin and you put it in the refrigerator, it'll last for about three to five days. But I usually finish the can within three days, give or take. All right. So I was like, let me get nine cans and do that. So I placed the order. No, I don't want to substitute. So then he got to Ralph's grocery store. And he sent me the picture showing the empty shelf where there's no canned pumpkin. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I was like, let me try another option. So then I went to DoorDash, which I like DoorDash, which, by the way, for anybody who lives in Los Angeles, if you are near a restaurant called Health Nut, their salads are amazing. When I tell you their salads are so good, ridiculously good. A little bit on the expensive side, but still good and worth the money. Worth the money. So DoorDash now works with some convenience stores. One of the convenience stores that DoorDash works with is Smart and Final, which is a grocery store. It's like a wholesale whatever type thing, like um, Sam's. Or what's the other one? Like Sam's Club, Costco, like that. Okay. So with the DoorDash, I placed the order on DoorDash and it was like, okay, we received your order. Within about two minutes, because I had found the cans of pumpkin. Within about two minutes of placing the order on DoorDash to get them to pick up from smart and final they replied back 
your order has been canceled. We're refunding your money. We're unable to fill your order. I'm like, are you kidding me? So then I start, I'm like, okay, let me cut out the middleman. Let me do that, which I'm infamous for doing anyway. Let me cut out the middleman. Let me go straight to the website. So I went straight to Albertsons. I went straight to Walmart. I went straight to Vons. I went straight to Pavilions. I feel like I went to another one as well. One after one after one after one. Every single one, they were sold out of canned pumpkin or pumpkin puree. With the Walmart, they had some in stock, some canned pumpkin, but it wasn't the one in this area. It was like a Walmart 20 miles away. And on top of that, you couldn't have it shipped to you. You had to go in in person and pick it up. So I'm just like, <sighs> did my show really clean out all of the stores? So I went online because you know me. If I don't know something, I'm looking it up. All right. So I go online. And I'm like, I just type in, I think I typed in canned pumpkin shortage. And then there was an article recently on some recipe website. I think it was all recipes or something like that. And they're saying, no, it's not a shortage. Even though the crop was a little bit different this year and all this other stuff. It's just that with a lot of people being at home and now that it's the holidays, the pumpkin isn't in stock as easily or as readily available as it usually is. So I'm without the canned pumpkin and trying not to lose my mind because I could have done canned sweet potato, which sort of gives me the same thing I'm looking for, which is the vitamin A. But the sweet potato has too much starch in it or too, you know, too many carbs and stuff. And canned, canned pumpkin is lower in carbs than the sweet potato. So I'm just like, oh. and then on top of that, another one of my premonitions came to pass today. I had a premonition about something three days ago, and I'll be damned if it didn't happen. And I'm not going to go into it because it's related to politics. But yeah, so I was just like, OK, I got to do my show after do this episode today which I'm doing this episode today in this daily thought because my ex had texted me this morning and was like you know how are you doing I'm like oh I'm fine da, 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 da. and then he asked me something and then he was like uh, when are we going to hang out which I've already told him I'm not in the mindset to hang out with people right now or, or anything like that, like in person with anybody, because I've been focused on other things. Obviously, I've been focused on getting rid of this sinusitis or whatever the hell this is, getting rid of that and getting everything else working right with the lymph nodes and stuff and working because that's what I do constantly work. So I'm, I'm not in that mindset to deal with someone in person and also with hanging out. I already know what my ex means by hang out. So that was the reason I decided to do this for my daily thought. Because with my ex, and I mentioned this before, it had been an ongoing thing. And I still, I still love my ex very much. I'm not in love with him anymore, but I, I still love him. And it's just crazy. It's like people don't realize what they have until it's gone. And this has been an ongoing, cheap telenovela, whatever you want to call it, soap opera, for the past, what, five years now that this has been going on. And I, it's like 
when I have found someone, and I mentioned this, if you're new to the if you're new to the show, there's an episode where um, the title of the episode, I think, because I'm going on almost a hundred episodes now with combined with the daily thoughts and keeping it real with KC. I think I'm close to almost a hundred episodes now, which is amazing. <laughs> Uh, I think the title of the episode is It's Okay Not to Look Back. And I also did a follow-up as to why I did that episode. And I was talking about my ex then. And it just amazes me when I had someone who flew all the way around the world and wanted, wanted to be with me in spite of what some might consider faults and my eccentricities because I can be quite eccentric sometimes. I was still hung up on my ex and my ex knew that. And I couldn't let go of my ex to grab the good thing in front of me. And it's like my ex wasn't paying as much attention to me until I was attempting to get to know and date and form something more solid with the person who flew all the way around the world to spend time with me, be with me and get to know me better and hang out in person and stuff. And after that fell through, obviously, I've lived the single life. And being single isn't a bad thing because like 40%, if I'm not mistaken, of the United States population is single anyway. All right. So being single is not, is not that serious. And, and also, I have a huge ego. So I love myself enough where I keep myself entertained and I enjoy my company. I don't have to be with someone. If I'm in a relationship with someone, great. If I'm not, that's fine too. It's, it's whatever. I can, I can go either way. Because I love myself and I have a huge ego. But when I'm unavailable, that's when he just keeps on wanting to pop up. When I was available, when I allowed him to come into my life, I made myself more accessible. He wasn't with that same energy. It was kind of like, well, he show up whenever he wants to show up or he wouldn't be as enthused while dealing with me. And it seems like, and I'm not saying that he's a bad person or anything like that. I'm not saying that. It just amazes me how with some people in general, because I know I'm not the only one this has happened to. And I know that even, you know, it maybe it's happened to you who are listening or watching where a person doesn't want you until someone else wants you or until you're gone. As soon as that happens, then all of a sudden they're texting or they're calling or they're knocking at the door or something like that, which you better not knock at the door because it'll be a different type of converse conversation. I don't play that at all. I can't stand what somebody does unannounced. You want to see someone go 730, do that. But it's, it just amazes me how people don't really appreciate something good when they have it. And I fall into that category too, or I fell into that category with what I was talking about with the person that came to see me because I didn't appreciate something good. And when I was getting the text today, I'm just like, 
He usually waits about a week and then he'll send a text. I'll answer it. I'll be cordial because I'm not looking to make a lot of conversation. And it's not just with him. It's just across the board, period. The only person that I really talk to maybe is my little sister, which, like I said, I'll be calling her or she'll be calling me this weekend and I'll I'll chop it up with her. And my god sister, I spoke my other my god sister that's here in California. I spoke to her a few days ago. We had a really good conversation because we hadn't talked in a minute. And we talked for like an hour. And, you know, the universe has really been looking out for her. And I'm, I'm so happy for her that things are working out. But it as for a whole bunch of people or me dealing with relatives or uh, associates or anything like that, I might briefly talk, like I, I mentioned the friend that works for Sony PlayStation with the whole God of War thing. That was brief. I talked to him maybe once a month. I don't talk to him every week. I don't talk to hardly anybody every week because I don't have the energy for it. I don't, I'm not in the mindset like that, not for most people. So my ex usually text me once a week and it's not a text to see how I'm doing. It's more of a text to feel me out, to see where my head's at is what it's for. And I don't like that. And it's getting, it's getting close. I've been polite. Like I said, I'll be polite, not fake. I've been polite, but it's, it's going to get to a point where, all right, now I'm going to have to go ahead and just be really, really direct with you. And when I do that with people, then they're like, oh my God, why are you being so mean? You just say so many hurtful things and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, all right, I've been telling you politely and dropping clues and doing all this other stuff. And you're not hearing me. So, yeah. But it, it's just how this energy happens when I'm gone. And for some of you out there, this is not, first of all, caveat, I'm not a licensed psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever. I don't. I'm not that. What I can tell you is if you feel in your heart of hearts that it's over, then it's over. Let it be over. If somebody wants to pop up with text and calls and stuff like that, you can be cordial, but don't let them get into your mind. Don't let them worm their way back into your heart. And I'm not saying that. And when I say worm their way back in, I know the way I articulated it. It, sound, it has a negative connotation to it, like worm their way in, as in if it's something nefarious. But that's not the case. I'm talking about you need to remember what happened, especially if it's something the cyclical where it's on and off, on and off, on and off. And if the person is sometimey, sometimes they want you, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they want you, sometimes they don't. It, what, why keep it up? Something's going to have to end. Like I said, it's a bad telen um, telenovela. Something's going to have to end. It's a cheap lifetime movie. It's going to have to end. It can't keep going on and on and on and on. And if you know in your heart of hearts that it's over, but you have that sometimey person in your life, usually, usually, and I'm going to, percentage wise, let's see, I'm going to say about 50 to 55% of the time when they message you, whether it's by text or they're calling you, 
They're trying to see where your head is at. It's not a, they, oh, I want to check on you and make sure you're all right. It's, oh, let me see how far I can go. Let me see if they're going to open the door to let me back into their heart. While you're off living your best life, doing your thing, whether you're off living your best life because you've already met someone new or you're off living your best life. Uh, one of the like I told you, I watch a lot, uh, a lot of tarot card readings and one of the tarot cards that is like living your best life is the nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles is you're you're in the whole thing. You're just radiating. You're solo. You have everything under control. It's almost like the Empress card. But the Nine of Pentacles card, like you're surrounded by wealth. It's usually anytime a Nine of Pentacles shows up in the tarot deck, it's usually a woman where she's surrounded by abundance and stuff. Similar to the Empress, but not quite there, but definitely very stable, can stand on her own loved, admired, and doesn't need anyone. So you're in your nine of pentacles in energy <laughs> by yourself or the lover's card. You're, you're with someone. It's one of those two. And all of a sudden, they want you. But when you're, when you had your cup open for them when you had your cup there for them to drink from the cup of your heart the cup of love where were they at they didn't want it in the in the tarot deck the four of cups card is you there's an offer but you reject it and so basically it's like that four of cups energy where there, something's being offered, but they're like, eh, I know the offer's there, but eh, whatever. That's kind of how it is with those people who all of a sudden want you when you're either with someone or you're gone. And it's like, why do you only want me then? Why didn't you want me when I was offering you a cup? When I was offering you my cup? Like I said, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I can't go into the psyche of why people's minds work the way they work. The only thing that I can do is be responsible for myself and be responsible for my happiness. And that's what I've been doing right now. I've been responsible for myself and responsible for my happiness. And that's what I'm saying to you. If you have someone who only wants you, that sometimey person, sometimes they want you, sometimes they don't. And the sometimes they want you is when you're off living your best life or when you're dating someone else. Then... Don't, don't let them in if you know in your heart of hearts that it's over. If you feel there may still be something there, okay, I believe in second chances, maybe even the third, depending on what's happening, trying to make something work. But how many times can you make something work? Maybe the universe is trying to tell you uh, you're trying to force a square into a circle or a circle into a square, however you want to say it. It's, it's not working. Maybe the universe is telling you to move on. I don't know. Or maybe the universe is teaching that person that they need to learn to appreciate what they had. The universe could be doing that too. 
if the universe, if the goal of the universe is to teach a person to appreciate what they have or had, which I'll say have, then the best thing you can do is move on. Because they're not going to appreciate what they have or had if you keep on coming back. If you keep on letting them pull you back in, you're off by yourself living your best life, standing in your radiance, and then they pull you back in, and then they become some tiny again. Or you're off dating someone, getting to know them, but then they pull you back in, and then they become some tiny again, and you lost a potentially great individual because that person you were once with pulled you right on back in because they don't want you until you're with someone else or until you leave and you just need to do your best to remain I don't want to say guarded even though guarded is a good term but I want to say do your best to keep your wits about you when you're dealing with people like that. Because you, you can always heal from heartbreak. You can always heal from that. Like I said in one of my episodes, you have more than one soulmate, period. That's, that's not up for debate. So you can always heal from heartbreak. But a constant breaking of the heart, constant hurt. You're not put on this planet to be constantly in pain. You weren't put here for that. You weren't put on this planet to constantly be someone's option. If they don't, if they can't make you a priority and be consistent with that, then move on to hell with them because that also goes to you knowing your worth you valuing yourself how much do you value yourself that you can stand on your own in your own radiance don't feel like you have to be with someone don't feel like you have to settle for a some timey person that only wants you when you're dating someone else or when you're off by yourself in your own radiance. You're worth more than that. So, and that's pretty much all I have. It just amazes me how these things happen sometimes where people just don't get it until it's late until it's too late I should say so yeah but the universe may need to teach somebody a lesson just like it taught me a lesson when I lost what I lost and after I lost that after I lost that good match and I know there's another match out there for me and as I said before whether I am with someone or single, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rock it out regardless because I have a huge ego. <laughs> so it, it's not that serious. However, the universe taught me, just like I mentioned during the episode, it taught me how to respect the power of love. And I know next time when... I come across something good, don't let all that other stuff show up. And maybe it's time for this person who sometimes me that only wants me when I'm off in my radiance by myself, like I am now because I'm by myself and, my, and I'm in my radiance, period. Not bragging, just it is what it is. Or when I'm trying to get to know someone. Maybe it's just time for him to learn to respect the power of love. 
And that's the same thing for you and who you may be dealing with in your life that is sometime me right now. It's time for them to learn to respect the power of love. Because if they respected it, they wouldn't be sometime me in the first place. They wouldn't have rejected your cup when you had it to them and you brought it to them consistently. They wouldn't have just said, uh, and turned their head away. Like on the Four of Cups card, usually the person's head is turned away because they don't want it. When something's being offered to them. So stand in your radiance. And if you're not standing in your radiance, then go find, find a lover. Whatever it is, go on your journey. Don't worry about what is trying to creep back in. And also you might want to set boundaries too. To let that person know so they won't always waste your time and your energy trying to figure out what's going on in your mind to see if they can get back into your life on a romantic level, an emotional level, a sexual level, or whatever type of level. So yeah, and that is all I have. Thank you to everyone who have been supporting the channel, the podcast, listening. I appreciate it more than you will ever know. KIRWKC.com. I had to think for a second is the main podcasting platform, KIRWKC on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com forward slash KIRWKC. If you're watching on YouTube or Daily Motion, don't forget to hit, hit the subscribe button if I can talk. If you're on YouTube, you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you will know when I upload new episodes. And, trying to keep from spitting here. <laughs> um, and, this weekend, more than likely, covering entertainment episodes. So I'm looking forward to that. Until next time, be blessed.